Hey, welcome back. So today I'm going to go over how I made the wavy line um, photos as well from PhotoCarve. So I have Kobe up here uh, tugging at his jersey, which is a photo I've always loved. So I figured it'd be nice to have something in the office like that. Um, and then I was thinking, well, I got a lot of questions on the last video how I did that. So um, might as well walk y'all through how I did this one because it's a little different. There's a couple setups in the software which I'll actually go over in this video unlike the last one um, that will get you this look. Now in the software there's some tinkering around. You don't have to have, this isn't an exact thing. You can spread out the spacing of the waves. You can figure out um, how much of a wavy pattern you actually want. You can go real wild with it. Um, but with that, you start losing the picture if you get too many waves in there, which I found. And you will also, going through just testing it yourself in the software when you play around with it. So I'll get into those settings. Um, I do cut everything, every photo carve I have with a 60 degree bit. Brand doesn't matter to me. I found that um, for whatever reason, when I buy the expensive ones, I just break them. Not because they're cheap, but I always find a way to drop them. So I just kind of buy the cheap stuff. Um, and for me, that's good enough because the pictures, the cut quality, um, once you get the bit dialed in, is just as good as any of the expensive ones. Now, do the expensive ones last longer? Maybe in your case they do. In my case, again, I break them, so they don't. <laughs> so not sure what the deal is with that. But uh, I've had two or three expensive um, white side and uh, some of the others. But they haven't lasted again because I drop them. So with the cheap ones, for whatever reason, those things hang on for dear life. Um, and they stick around. So this is probably on one bit, even with a broken tip. Like I've even dropped this thing, but it didn't uh, crack as bad. And I've been testing it. But even with the broken bit, probably the last four or five photo carves have still come out well. You can't really tell a difference. Um, but that bit, the cheap ones I normally get, I'd probably say 30 to 40 of these. Now, I haven't tested it to see how far I can push it, but normally 30 to 40 and something crazy happens, like I'll lose the bit or drop it or whatever. But 30 to 40 for a $20 V-bit seems perfectly acceptable to me. I mean, what is that? Pennies? Pennies per um, use? So not, not too shabby. Well, maybe 50 cents. Um, but still, 50 cents per pitcher, not too bad. Um, now, if you want me to get into pricing these, since I do make several different sizes, this is a bigger, probably one of my biggest ones, um, which is almost, what is it, 20 by 24 or so. Um, I don't get much bigger. I think the biggest one I've made that I feel comfortable with my T-slot um, hanging is 24 by 24. Otherwise, MDF gets pretty heavy. So if you're curious about how I price these, anywhere from I normally make... Um, I'd say in the range of a 16 by 12, 16 by 16, up to my most popular size is probably the 
the 20 by 20 or the 24 by 20, depending on how the picture looks. Um, between those, then you just kind of mix and match on what the customer is actually wanting. But uh, if you want how I cost these out, material costs, or how I do it, uh, put a comment down below, and if I get enough, I'll go into detail on that. It's not super hard, but everybody kind of has their own way, so maybe it'll be helpful for you if you're just getting started with these on kind of what to think through um, and all of that, and like the different things that you don't necessarily think of as far as spending money to make this or using your supplies up to make this. So with that, we'll get into making this. I'll walk you through it all again. Any questions, feel free to leave them down below and let's get going. All right, <clears throat> so we have the new picture that I'm gonna do today, um, Kobe pulling on his jersey. This one's gonna be a tutorial on how to actually get the wavy lines that you saw. So it's a little bit different of a setup, not too much more, but there's still a few things that you need to know to get it right, um, or to at least get it looking good. And there's um, some other stuff in here that you need to be aware of just to help like this box, I'm gonna go over the box here in a second as well. Um, it helps kind of constrain everything in. But find your picture that you want, put it up in here, um, get all your dimensions, everything right, get the picture the way you want it to look. This is how I think I want it to look. So even though a little bit of Kobe's hanging off, I think I got uh, the overall image that I like. So depending on how you want to do this, if you want edges around your picture, either on the side or top and bottom or both, create a box. So I already have the box created here. Um, you're going to want to put the box around the part of the photo that you basically want to lock in and not have anything outside of. So for this example, it's going to be just the photo. I'm going to have the two edges here not um, carved into. So once we get the box, once you get the photo, once you're happy with how that looks, you're going to come over here. And this is the big difference between just the standard V-carve where you would just come to this photo or the photo V-carve right here and just click on that and it would automatically go in and put the lines on for you on your picture and you're done. The big, the two big differences are if you want to constrain it, the box basically telling it where you want the lines to be and where you don't want them to be on your uh, piece of material. And then coming over here to this vector texture. So click on that. You're going to see this um, pop up. So these are the options I've used. It's just saved them from the last time I did it, which is not bad. Um, now, these are all going to be dependent on your actual photo. So this is kind of the time consuming piece of this is I've tried this on probably three or four different pictures and I've had to adjust a little bit. I'm not saying a lot, but you've had, I've had to touch up a little bit each time. Um, so it's not too bad. Once you get the hang of it, you can kind of go in, have an idea of, um, what you need. Like example, wavelength, um, probably going to be five inches on this one. If you have a smaller picture, just remember five inch is the complete from, you can see it here in this picture, it's the complete wavelength here. So a smaller picture, you wouldn't get as many wavelengths as you would on a bigger picture. And then you'll be able to see what that looks like here in a second. But I'll go ahead and preview this just to give you an idea. So you wanna make sure that box is selected and then hit preview. And that way it doesn't kick you out and just put this in there. Otherwise you have to go back in um, to update it. So if you hit preview, you get the lines, you can kind of see the wavelengths here. 
So you want them close, but not too close to each other. Otherwise it may affect the V-bit and the actual groove it makes. Um, overall, this looks pretty good. If you wanted to adjust how big the waves are, I mean, just for a crazy example, just to show it, you'll see how big those wavelengths are compared to what they were. Um, definitely not what you want. So two to two and a half is probably good for most. Um, you can see how that smoothed out there. Now, this is what happens we can go ahead and talk about this real quick. So I didn't have the box selected and it just put everything over all my material. So that's just what it is. If you want the whole material to do it, that's fine. Then you don't need the box and that's what it'll do right there. Um, but for this, I wanted the, um, the boxed in constraint. So I'm going to have to go back and redo that. So I just need to select my box and go back in. Not a big deal. Um, but let's get that preview. I think that actually looks pretty good. So hit okay. And then I already, since I already have this photo set up, I have, um, the V carve already generated, but pretty much to go in, select your stuff. Nothing you probably haven't done before. Max carving depth, 06 to 07, 05 depending on what you want. Not sure why that was set to 07. Um, but also you want to have selected vectors so that, especially for the box constraint, if you're doing the whole thing, it doesn't really matter. Um, but this is selected vectors. So let's calculate that. Now, well, let me get that. Get all this didn't have Kobe selected so let it calculate now preview you can kind of see what it looks like so what I've noticed is if you get the these wavelengths you can kind of see going at I don't know what that is like a 45 or so 43 and a half I think is what it was those can kind of affect the white balance on it um, so you can play with those just to see how it's going. Um, let's go back real quick up here. We have everything. So we have that. Let's say we didn't like that. Um, I do 22.5 a lot on my other stuff. Let's see what that looks like. Again, didn't have, I thought I had my box selected. So we'll cancel all that real quick. Get rid of that. All right, so 22.5 should be able to preview, should go in the box. Okay, so those are even, looks a little, eh, we'll see. Looks a little better, maybe. All right, so go back into photo. We got to select everything. Calculate. Reset preview, preview selected. So that might, might work a little better, I don't know. We got to try it out and see how it looks on the CNC, but that's not too bad. All right, so once you're there, if you like what you see, just export again. Oh, the other thing I mentioned in the other video, um, most of the time it's defaulted onto material color unless you've already messed with this machine area. And you see how it's kind of bland. Um, if you're gonna paint it, you can go in and select the color that you're gonna paint. Like if you're gonna paint this green for some reason, you'd get green there. Kind of give you an idea of what green would actually look like. Um, same thing, red. If you're going to go black, which most everybody does, you can put black there and it'll actually bring the picture out a little more so you have a better idea of what it's actually going to look like. So this is really handy to get a, a really good picture um, in your mind of what it's actually going to look like because this is pretty spot on. 
from everything I've seen. All right, now that we have everything there, um, you like it, you can save, export it to the CNC side of things, and let's get going on that. One other thing I wanted to cover real quick um, was the bit. So I have my 60 degree V bit in there. Uh, you can check 60 degree. These are my speeds and feeds. So again, Enosic, whatever, it, cheap bit. Um, been working great for me. This is what I run mine at. Uh, let me grab, I took a screenshot of my CNC build so you can compare to yours. Um, I know not everybody has the Avid or you may have a different one. Um, but for my machine, these are the speeds and feeds I found that work best for this bit. Um, nice, clean groove, no fuzzies, anything like that. Um, so tinker with it. You can take mine as a starting point. Um, but unless you have my exact machine, it's probably going to differ a little bit here or there. Um, feed rate, if you have a slower machine or one of the lesser models, I would say probably bump feed rate down a little bit, maybe start at 100 or um, 80 to 100 would probably be pretty good. So just tinker with it. It doesn't take too long to hone in. You can kind of see if you're going too slow or too fast. But I just wanted to point that out for y'all because I know there's always questions on what's your machine, what's your feeding speeds. Uh, so I just wanted to show that here now you know what I'm working with and you can kind of tailor it to what you need. All right, so for this Kobe pitcher, um, what I'm gonna do is start sanding it, but you gotta be careful with the lighter spots in your photos. Um, for this photo, his jersey, this armband right here, um, and then a little bit of his head, you can kinda see there a little bit. Um, in the real photo, you can see it better, but there's kind of a light on it as well. So for the, the brighter spots, they're going to come out quicker. The darker spots, like around his body, you may need to sand just a little bit more, but these, white, these whiter um, spots in here, like his jersey and stuff, that is going to come out pretty quick. So I'm not going to stay too long on that. Um, I'm going to go back and forth decently quick just to see what's taken off in the first pass. Um, with that... Let me get me a new pad. Now, normally I always start with a brand new pad because even with the paint dry and it being dusty and all that, I still, still gum these pads up. So, I mean, it does ruin a pad. You're not gonna use it very often. If you do keep the same one on for multiple pictures, it will take a little bit, but 
I mean, it's a simple 120 pad, 120 grit pad. Um, get that there. Now I do have this belt cleaning stick as well that I may clean off the disc halfway through or something if it starts seeming like it's taking a little longer than normal. Uh, that does help me get through if I just, if I'm getting kind of lazy and don't want to change pads or I'm out of pads, I'll use this and it does help enough to get through a couple of these. So you may want to pick the, that up as well if you don't want to go through as many discs. So now I'm not going to speed this up. This is actual time just so you can kind of see how quick I'm going over this. Um, normal sanding techniques are out the window with this. It's all feel and you'll see him come to life. Right now you got a little bit of a glare on him so you can see him better than I can. Um, on my side he's a little it's a little darker. Let me see if I can get an actual. So right now that's basically what I'm looking at is a lot of black. Um, I can kind of see it but still gonna need some work. So Let's see what we can do. So I think, again, I'll show you my vantage point. So I think that's coming out pretty good right there. Um, so you can see what I'm talking about with the lighter and darker parts of it. Um, they can easily get blown out. It's tough to get it uh, 100%, but that's the cool thing about these photos. Nobody's really expecting perfection per se um, because they're all different. They're basically considered you know, handmade because somebody could sand more, somebody could sand less. It's all kind of left up to interpretation on what you think looks good or what doesn't. Um, I think that's actually pretty good. So now I'm going to take this, going to put my T-Track in it, or my, not my T-Track, my T-Slot in the back to hang it on the wall. Um, I found that works better, especially in MDF. I'm worried about putting screws in it as they'll wiggle loose, I think. Um, after a while, if you keep messing with the pitcher or knocking it around, I've never trusted that. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. But I'll just put the T-slot in the back. You can throw a nail in the wall and I've never had one uh, come undone or break or anything like that. So that's kind of what I'm sticking with um, on about this size and smaller photos that I do. So this one ended up being right at about, I think, what is that? A little shy of 20 by pretty much 24 is what this is. So I haven't had any issues hanging this on the wall. So now T-slot in the back, shellac it, um, and then you're done. So for the T-slot, I got this Yonico bit, um, not sponsored. But I've used it for, I'd probably say, 20 to 30 of these. I'm um, putting the T-slot in the back of my pitchers. Still going strong. I think it's finally wearing out. But, I mean, for the price, 20 to 30. But uh, been decent for what I've been doing with it. Um, my sweet little T-slot jig that took about, I don't know, five minutes and a little bit of super glue. Nothing fancy at all. Um, basically, this is the size I want to go. Um, in almost all my photos, I'll put something around here. It ends up being, I don't know, two, three inches. Give you a little wiggle room um, when hanging the photos. So I don't think you can have too big of a slot. Who knows? Um, the only thing I do is I measure the center of this. I'll put a line up here. And then I have a center line right here that I match that to. And then I'll clamp this down and then just route it out. Now 
as you can see there it leaves a pretty good slot um, just a little bit of sand in to get the fuzzies off the edge of it but other than that you're ready to go now just to sand the back get some of this other stuff off from just letting it sit on the ground um, and then shellac and this project will be done okay now that we have Kobe sanded t-slot put in everything done now just we're just gonna quickly finish them um, make sure to get the sides now when I'm going through this hopefully you can see that the shellac is putting a little bit of a yellow amber tint to it now some may like it some may not I actually prefer it um, for one it gives more of a antique rustic feel to it, whatever you want to call it it also kind of helps uh, the picture pop a little more black and white's cool I haven't figured out what black and like black and white likes to be finished with to keep most of that um, still working through that if y'all have any comments or answers to that one just leave them down in the comments below I'd love to hear what kind of finish would keep this from yellowing um, but for me I've done every single one of mine with that um, super happy with the results 